Quick, look around you right now. What's alive and what's not? Your pet? Definitely alive. Your desk? Definitely not. But what about that plant in the corner that hasn't grown in months? Or what about fire? It moves, it grows, and it even consumes fuel. Is fire alive? Welcome to Seismic. I'm Matt, and today we're tackling one of the biggest questions in all of science. What exactly makes something alive? You might think this is an easy question, but get ready to have your mind blown. Scientists have spent centuries figuring out the characteristics that all living things share. From the tiniest bacteria to the biggest blue whale, by the end of this video, you'll be able to settle any debate about what's alive and what's not. Let's dive in. Scientists have identified seven key characteristics that all living things must have. One, they must be made of cells. Two, they have to have an organized structure. Three, they have to experience growth and development. Four, they must reproduce. Five, they have to use energy. Six, they must respond to their environment. And seven, they must maintain homeostasis. Every living thing on Earth, from a single bacteria to a massive elephant, shares all seven of these characteristics. Miss even one, and scientists won't classify it as truly alive. So let's go through each one and see how they work in the real world. Get ready to look at life in a whole new way. First up, all living things are made of cells. Cells are like the building blocks of life the smallest unit that can still be considered alive. Some living things, like bacteria, are made of just one cell. These are called unicellular organisms. That single cell has to do everything. Find food, get rid of waste, reproduce. It's like a tiny biological machine. But most living things you see every day are multicellular, made of millions or even trillions of cells working together. Your body has about 37 trillion cells. Each one has a specific job, whether it's a muscle cell helping you move or a brain cell helping you think. This is actually why viruses are such a puzzle for scientists. Viruses aren't made of cells. They're just genetic material wrapped in a protein coat. They need to hijack living cells to reproduce. That's one reason many scientists don't don't actually consider viruses to be truly alive. The second characteristic is organization. Living things aren't just random collections of cells. They're organized into structures that work together. Your heart cells form heart tissue, which makes your heart organ, which is part of your circulatory system. Now, characteristics three and four go hand in hand. Growth and development plus Reproduction. All living things grow and change over time in predictable patterns. A seed becomes a sprout, then a mature plant. A caterpillar transforms into a butterfly. And here's something crucial. All living things can reproduce or make more of themselves. This might be as simple as a bacteria splitting in two or as complex as the amazing process that created you. Some organisms reproduce by themselves, like many plants and bacteria. Others need a partner, like most animals. But every living thing has some way to create offspring and pass on their characteristics to the next generation. This is why crystals, even though they grow, aren't alive. They get bigger by adding more material, but they can't reproduce and create new crystals with their own unique characteristics. The fifth characteristic is using energy. Every living thing needs fuel to power their life processes. Plants capture energy from sunlight through photosynthesis. Animals get energy by eating plants or other animals. Even when you're sleeping, your cells are using energy to keep you alive. Sixth, all living things respond to their environment. Plants grow toward light, animals run from danger, and even bacteria move toward their food sources. Living things constantly sense what's happening around them and react appropriately. Finally, homeostasis. This is a fancy word meaning that living things maintain stable internal conditions even when their environment around them is changing. When it's hot outside, you sweat to cool down. When it's cold, you shiver to warm up. Plants close their pores to conserve water during droughts. Think of homeostasis like a thermostat in your house. It keeps the temperature steady no matter what is happening outside. Your body has dozens of these internal thermostats keeping everything balanced. Now for the fun part. Let's test some tricky examples. Is fire alive? Well, it moves, it grows, and it consumes fuel for energy, and it even reproduces by starting new fires. But fire isn't made of cells, it doesn't maintain homeostasis, and it doesn't have organized structure. So no, 
fire isn't alive. What about viruses? This is actually still debated by scientists. Viruses can reproduce and evolve, but they can't do it on their own. They need to hijack living cells. Most scientists say viruses are on the edge of life, but aren't truly alive because they can't maintain themselves independently. Could a robot ever be alive? Current robots aren't made of cells and can't reproduce on their own, but as technology advances, the question might become more interesting. Science fiction often explores this idea. The key is that to be truly alive, something must have all seven characteristics. It's like a checklist. You can't skip any steps. These seven characteristics unite every living thing on our planet, from the bacteria in your gut, to the trees in your backyard, to you yourself. All life shares these incredible features. Understanding what makes something alive helps us appreciate the amazing diversity of life around us and guides scientists as they search for life on other planets. Who knows? Maybe someday you'll be the scientist who discovers life beyond Earth. Want to explore more about cells, life science, and biology? Check out our complete middle school science curriculum at seismic.com, where every student can learn, grow, and achieve. Don't forget to subscribe for more amazing science videos, and let me know down in the comments, what's the most interesting living thing you've ever observed?